For our experiment, we needed a bathroom with a toilet and a toothbrush, a sweet, innocent toothbrush, unaware of the monstrosities that might be inflicted upon it at any moment. Sorry, getting a bit carried away there. So that's the easy part. But how on earth are we going to prove the science? With ultraviolet light, that's how. We put ultraviolet dye down the toilet, allowing us to monitor any toilet water movement and turned our bathroom into a disco toilet. <laughs> the first part of the theory is that a toilet will spray droplets of water into the air. But how far? We laid out markers in the bathroom at intervals of one foot, all the way up to six feet, where we placed our toothbrush. But we also needed a flusher, and this chap's taking no chances. <laughs> so it's time to flush in three, two, one. Filmed in slow motion with ultraviolet light, you can see that simply flushing a toilet can fling water droplets over two feet away. But it hasn't reached our toothbrush six feet away, or has it? What about the microscopic aerosolized droplets we can't see with the naked eye? Well, that can be solved by using dry ice to see them. This cloudy spray provides a visual backdrop, so the tiny droplets we missed before can hide no more. Combined with the UV light and a high-speed camera, we capture the movement of the aerosolized water droplets through the air. But will they reach the toothbrush six feet away? It took no time at all to notice droplets above the toilet, and as our man in the suit moved the dry ice further away, slowly but surely we observed them spreading through the room. Finally, after an hour and 49 minutes, we recorded water full of toilet germs around the toothbrush. Proof that airborne bacteria from a toilet can reach a toothbrush six feet away. So next time you brush your teeth, have a think about what might also be on those bristles. Please welcome Mehmet. Hello. Hello, Mehmet. How are you? How are you doing? Yeah. Now, uh, before we blindfold you, can you please have a good sniff of Mehmet's armpit so you know exactly what smell you're looking for? But are people really more likely to believe a statement if it rhymes? Here's Professor Matt McGlone to clarify.